The government is planning to launch a bug bounty program by the end of this year. Now, the program invites international and local ethical or white hat hackers to identify bugs and blind spots in government networks. Dexter Ng joins us in studio to tell us more about this. He is the chief technology officer and co-founder of Anti-Hack, an ethical hacking and security consulting startup. Dexter, yeah. thanks so much for coming in. Thanks. Thanks for having me. Now, firstly, yeah. white hat hacking is becoming increasingly popular, ethical hacking, uh, that is. How does it work and how can organizations sort of benefit from it? Yeah. So white hat hackers will actually act like normal hackers we should be trying to break your system mm. and but they will actually report the vulnerabilities to the companies mm. yeah. and through a bug bounty program they will actually be rewarded for the vulnerabilities that they are reported okay so yeah. the organizations then invite uh, white hackers or yes. white hat hackers to to try and sort of yes. break the system then that's it's right. usually initiated by them yes that's right mm. Yeah. So uh, we understand that Mindev has already employed the strategy now the entire government is coming on board uh, what are some of the factors that authorities or officials need to have in mind, especially because these white hat hackers will be dealing with a lot of potentially sensitive uh, yes. and personal data? Yes, so the common um, things that they need to look out for is they are scared that when the hackers actually don't report the vulnerabilities and then they take it and then post it on social media. Mm. Yeah. Would that have, does, does that happen? How has that happened before? In your uh, that has happened before in, on the overseas uh, bounty programs. Mm. And what normally what we can do is we can limit that to the local hackers as well. Yeah. So I suppose some of the concerns then as well mm. for uh, this bug bounty program yes. is that it almost well, could potentially give a free pass to, to, uh, to hackers uh, to try and get into sort of government sort of facilities if you that's like. That's actually a misconception. So actually hackers do not get any free pass through a bug bounty program because no special admin access are given to them at all. Mm. So they will be public facing completely like a normal user. Okay. Yeah. No, but that also means that it's almost mm. as if uh, the government in this case gives yes. you permission to sort of, hey, you know, go ahead and, and try to find something uh, wrong with our systems, yes. and somebody who has less than ideal intentions could perhaps use that as an opportunity to, for, for, for more nefarious uh, objectives, isn't it? Yes, um, that's why probably the government will probably be keeping it in a close community instead of having it fully public. Yeah. So they will actually screen the people that are invited onto the platform. Okay, and I suppose you see that as sort of, you must be welcome that sort of uh, yes, involvement right. by the government to, yes. to do all the background checks and that yes, sort of thing. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in your experience with ethical hacking, um, and in these days, many companies, many organizations already have, I suppose, the typical defenses in place, yes. but still there would be vulnerable points. Yes, in your right. experience, what and where would these vulnerable points be? Yes, because the traditional uh, companies normally only have like enough budget to maybe hire five or maybe ten uh, cybersecurity experts or pen testers. Whereas having a bug bounty program, you can use 400 over hackers or more, or even thousands, depending on how big the program is. But so 1,000 people will always be better than 5 to 10 people. Right, but in terms of, mm. of points of entry in the system, though, I mean, yes. recently, if you look at the Sing Health cyber attack, it yes. was the front-facing terminals that were the vulnerable ones. Yes. Hackers used that to enter the system. Yes. Uh, when it comes to, in, in this case, when the government opens this up to white hat hackers, yes. would that be a key uh, uh, entry point, you think? Or is, is, are, are there other entry points that are perhaps more or equally vulnerable? Yeah, so that's why having a bug bounty program will actually make um, the reporting of vulnerabilities and giving to the relevant people to patch it up before even the other hackers can, before the bad guys can get it. Yeah, so, you, so I guess yeah. the idea is really flush out. Yes, so basically the, the, to flush out points. as many vulnerabilities as possible. Okay, yeah. and are you seeing a lot more resources going into this to, to these sorts of activities? Yes, so there are more, this is actually gaining more and more traction in the next few months or years. Mm. Yeah, more and more Asian companies are changing their mindset because the Asian mindset is very closed mm. compared to the US and Europe companies. All right, well, thanks yeah. so much for coming in, Dexter. Thanks. Dexter, Chief Technology Officer and Co-Founder from Anti-Hack and Ethical Hacking and Security Consulting Startup.